Hello and welcome. Today we're doing a question from Leak Code. It's called Unique Email Addresses. It's an easy. Um, let's get started. So every email consists of a local name and a domain name separated by the at sign. For example, in Alice at leakcode.com, Alice is the local name and leakcode.com is the domain name. Besides the lowercase letters, these emails may contain periods or pluses. If you add periods between some characters in the local name, mails will be sent to the same address without dots in the name. So dots are basically meaningless. For example, alice.z at leakcode.com and alice at leakcode.com are the same email. Um, this does not apply to the domain name, however. So after the at sign, it does not apply. If you add a plus in the local name, everything after the plus sign will be ignored. This allows certain emails to be filtered. For example, m.y plus name at email.com will be forward to my at email.com. Okay. And again, this rule does not apply to domain names. So here we just got rid of the name. Um, and it's possible to use both of these rules at the same time. As we saw here, both the period and the plus were used. Given a list of emails, we send one email to each address in the list. How many different addresses actually receive emails? So here we have test email. So just test email, ignore this, at leakcode.com. Here, again, this is test email ignore the periods um, at leakcode.com. And of course, everything after the plus two we ignore. Um, and then test email at, so here it's lee.tcode.com. So that is different and which is why we have two different outputs. So this is a fairly simple, easy problem. I think it's just good for string manipulations, making sure we know um, whatever language we're coding in pretty well, how to use string operations. So we're going to have a set. This is going to store all of our unique email addresses and we just keep adding to the set after we get rid of the periods, remove everything after the plus, and return the length of the set at the very end. So for each email, email in emails, um, we want to first split into the local and domain name. So the first part and the second part. So first, um, let's call it last, equals email dot split on the at. So what dot split does is it finds every instance of whatever character you have in this quotation mark here. It's an at. So every at that occurs, it's going to make a list and remove the at. So for example, over here, if I have alice at leakcode.com, it's going to return a list where the first index store is alice z, the second store is leakcode.com. If there were more ads, it would just make more um, additions to the list. Every Everything that comes between the ads. So here it would be this, this, if there's another ad after this and more text after, that text would be in another index. So now that we have split on this at right here, we want to get rid of all of these pluses. So everything after the plus, we don't care about. So if plus in that first part, um, we remove the plus and everything after. So first now equals first. So colon means we're including everything up until. So first dot index of that plus. Index of this character is going to return its first occurrence in this string. So the index of that will now not be included in first. We've rewritten first to not include plus and after. And of course, we want to replace everything with the periods. We just want to get rid of them and add it to our set. So a.add first.replace. We're going to replace all the periods with nothing. So this is just an empty string right here. It takes all the periods and replaces it with this. Pretty, pretty self-explanatory. Um, and then we want to put the string back together, both the domain name and local name. So we're adding the at symbol. Adding last. Nothing really had changed for last. We didn't really manipulate it in any way. 
and now we want to return the length of a so it's going to have all the unique email addresses that's what the set will do for us so return length of a let's run this code accepted and submit and it's accepted as well so quickly talking about space and time complexities space it's going to store whatever the set stores right so it could be O of M if M is the number of unique emails this comes out to. And for time complexity, it's going to be O of N because we're iterating through every single email in the emails. When we do this split, again, we go through the entire email, find all the ads, split, make a list. When we're finding this, it's another linear scan. Replacing is another linear scan. So all of these are basically linear and end up being O of N. If you have any questions at all, let me know down below. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.